Welcome back everybody, Broadbent here. Today we're going to be covering all the major changes in the 0.65 update for the forest. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. We have a brand new skinned texture for the rabbit, lizard, deer and crocodile. These look absolutely gruesome as hell. They are like deep red with strokes down. You can see why like you've ripped the skin. It looks gruesome. Honestly, take a moment and just look at it. Now I'm getting quite close to them here, but normally they don't look this blurry. But when you're at a normal distance, they do look very detailed and very freaky indeed. The raft and houseboat have had a revisit with the requirements for the build. Now they didn't say specifically what the change was, but I'm pretty sure it's just they both now require rope. However, the large raft previously, I think, required rope, but now it doesn't, so they've inverted it a little bit there. They have added a brand new animation to the flare, so whenever you go and equip it and pull out the flare, it will now, like, pull off the lid and then use the lid to spark it. It looks very nice, very smooth, and they've also added a sound effect to go with it. And to go with that, they've also added a flare gun reload animation. Now this thing is so smooth, everything just goes one after the other, boom, 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 and then you've reloaded it. I think the best way to describe it is smooth, it just looks perfect. And to go with that, they've also added a sound effect for the animation. There was an issue with the blood sprays where they weren't being produced correctly when doing the explosion attack, you know, you jump down with a sword and the, uh, the enemy explodes. Well, those blood sprays weren't spawning correctly, but they've gone ahead and fixed it, so now you get that extra gore every single time. If you are climbing a wall using the axe, and then you go ahead and unequip the axe, you will now fall. However, I tried this, and I was just completely unable to unequip the climbing axe while I was using it. I don't know what I was doing. I tried pressing my hotkeys to switch to another weapon. I tried pressing G to put my weapon away. Nothing worked, so I'm not really sure what's happening there. Let me know if you've had a different experience. If you equip the torch when it's got no charge left, it will now have a little upsurge, so the light will flicker really fast and then turn off to show you that the battery is depleted. I can imagine this would be very freaky if you're navigating the forest at night and really need that battery, but it's just flickering going crazy. Absolute nightmare material. So now when you attack animals, they will appear bloody when you strike them. This will, I'm pretty sure that it's like area dependent, so if you hit them on the nose, their head will become bloody, if you hit them on the arse, then they're gonna become bloody. But it's a very nice visual indicator that you have dealt damage to the animal. Very, very nice change. The villagers have had a lot of new props added in. So for example here we have the bucket which looks very nice, it just fits in perfectly. We also have the new bench you can see here which I think this has completely replaced the table by the way. Which if you try and find the old table, the tall and thin one is gone. It's now replaced with this thicker, shorter, stubbier one. Also to go along with that we've had the new chair which can be found laying around the villagers. Looks really nice and thrown together like it's not had that much effort put into it, but it's still structurally sound. They've also added the sleeping mats, as you can see here, some are rolled up, some aren't, and they've also added some bowls that can be laying around. And this is all in an effort to make the huts feel more lived in and feel more used. And I completely get that. This change has made all the villagers now seem a little bit more lively. Before, they were just empty ghost towns that weren't being used. So the three larger animal heads, the shark, crocodile, and deer heads, now have collision if you place them on a head mount on a wall. That means, yes, you can stand on a shark head. Now this is in an effort to stop the players from clipping through them. I did notice this quite a few updates ago, but never really thought much of it. Okay, so this next change is a bug fix, but I personally didn't see it working. It says here, if you built a staircase in a circle and stood in the center and attempted to build it while you were in the center of it, then you wouldn't be able to complete it. However, I still couldn't complete it, but this was in more of a spiral shape, but then I went to go and do it in a circle and it worked fine. Not sure if the spiral was in that change too, but that seems like an issue if you ask me. The main change there was that if you're not actually clipping through the staircase itself, the blueprint for the staircase, then you should be able to build it no matter what. However, with the spiral staircase, that wasn't the case. This next change is rather hilarious. It says here, replaced FXAA with a working version. So what was it doing before? By the way, I've also got the three options on screen right now. The left is disabled, the second one is medium, and then the third one is high. However, if you look, 
There's no difference between the two end ones, the disabled and high. There's no difference at all, so I think there's an issue with the high option. The beach huts have been revisited and they've had a lot of love given to them. They now have a lot of interior design, they've got some benches and mats laying around, also some skulls, which I imagine are worth a feasting on. However, I still don't really understand what the big shoots are for, I guess st a staircase would be better. But this is also related to the general changes with the villagers to make them feel more lived in by adding extra detail. So they have also increased the health of the deer. Now this is not a drastic change, it probably is going to take one or two extra hits with the katana to take down. But one thing to take note of is that the spear is still a one hit kill, so you don't have to worry about that. So they have completely revisited the cave exploration tasks. Now this isn't an effort to make the achievement much easier to get. So in order to fully explore a cave in the past, what you had to do was go through these invisible triggers that were strategically placed around the cave. However, now it is based on how much of that cave you have explored on your map. Now, alongside this, they have also improved the accuracy of the map rendering system, because it previously used to make mistakes and bits used to be left off. It was quite splodgy, if that makes any sense, but now that has been ironed out. So you can now go ahead and hit the flight attendant and she will get bloody. Don't know why they added this, but it also didn't work for me. You can see here that I'm going crazy, hitting the hell out of her, and I went for ages to see if I could get any blood on her, but no, it did not work. Let me know in the comments below if this is working for you. The dedicated server browser previously had a massive issue with the scroll bar. Now it used to go invisible under certain circumstances, like if you moved your mouse over to it too soon or something like that, it was going invisible all the time. But now that's been fixed and you can easily navigate the dedicated server list. In the last update, the ocean used to look really laggy. I'm not sure if you noticed this, but the FPS seemed to be a lot lower. It, like it was locked at about 10, 15 FPS for the ocean to like update but now that has been fixed. They've also applied a fix to some enemies appearing black when you killed them in traps. They also fixed some issues with the held plane axe clipping through the player hand. The temporary shelter blueprint will no longer render over the survival book. The player will now correctly take armor damage from enemy stomp attacks. Previously, I believe it was just going straight to your health. Also, with stomp attacks, you'll now properly see the blood effect showing on the screen. So this next change actually made me question my humanity a little bit. They have fixed the sound effect when killing a live-held rabbit. So previously, they just dropped to the floor. However, now, you hear this. I, I can't, it's just too much! They've also adjusted the volume levels of the chainsaw. Thank god, that thing was obnoxious to use. God, that's enough of that. Turn that down. Jesus. All jokes aside, I really do appreciate this change and it is much more balanced and not as ear rapey to use. They have fixed an issue with dedicated servers where clients wouldn't always see the animals laying around, and that was due to leaving to the title screen and then joining back. It's a rather odd one that, but I did experience it myself, so rather happy to see that fixed. Now, this is a big spoiler warning. Everything ahead of this point is to do with the end of the game, so if you've not completed this game, do not continue watching. You have been warned, spoilers ahead. So they have made some significant changes to the boss mob. So now overall, the boss is more aggressive and is more difficult to kill. Now what does that mean? Well, what they've gone ahead and done is add a bunch of new attacks for the boss. So we've got quite a few here. We've got like a crazy spinning one where they stand on one leg and then spins the other leg around like a repeller. We've got another one where she does some sort of lunge attack towards us. It's kind of cool, it pushes you back. I really like that one. And then we've got a bunch of others which just generally make her a lot harder to kill. Also, one very crucial change to the end game is now if you die while fighting the boss mob, you will respawn at the bed just outside the door. Now let me know what you think to this, because I think it's a little bit OP, like you should probably be given a few attempts, and like it's infinite, what is what I'm saying. You can constantly respawn at the bed with no consequences. As long as you've got enough food, you can constantly go back and fight her. It does make sense because otherwise you would have to go through the entire end game again to get back to the boss fight. So let me know what you think to that in the comments below. Also, one thing to take note of massively is if you are trying to defeat the boss mob in multiplayer, let's say three people, then the boss mob's health will be increased with a multiplier of three, or at least I think it is. The change here says the end boss health now scales with the amount of players currently in the game. 
So that means if you have two players, I assume it will be double the health. And if you have ten, it'll be ten times the health. Or at least that makes sense to me. So it's no longer going to be super easy with eight players in the game. Alright everyone, so that sums up the major changes for the 0.65 update for the forest. Let me know what you thought of this update in the comments below. I'll be in there all day checking out your comments. So be sure to let me know. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you found it helpful. And I'll catch you in the next video.